Hello everybody, I'm Richard. In this video series I want to have a look at some of the more interesting 30mm film footage I have collected since I started this channel. In this episode I'm going to have a look at film footage of a major event, the Battle of the Bulge. Because today, some 77 years ago, the Germans launched a major offensive campaign to break through the Allied lines and get to the port of Antwerp. So the first interesting film footage we're looking at is from the start of the conflict, where we can see several panther tanks on fire from several locations. The first panther we see was filmed close to the town of Krinkelt. It would have had turret number 126 and is a G version. It was abandoned on the 18th of December when it got stuck in a ditch. It was filmed by the Americans the next day and was set on fire just for this newsreel. It was actual common practice to set these tanks on fire for the newsreels. They also took a set of pictures that shows an American soldier parading around a captured German, probably to set up the narrative that this is a captured crew member and it's taken right after the heat of battle. The next shot we see two other Panther tanks in the town of Krinkelt. The main Panther in front would have had toward number 318 and the second one is unknown. These panther tanks would be easy prey in the morning mist and the bazooka teams could easily knock them out at close range and in the end 5 panther tanks were destroyed in this chaotic battle against the 99th infantry division. 318 actually had its barrel blown off by the numerous bazooka hits. What I found to be pretty ordinary was that you can see in full view the burned out remains of the crew which was actually cut out of the original newsreel. The film crew went actually out of their way to film every German remain on all of these Panther tanks. This is not something you would see a lot. The other tank you will see many times in newsreels is the Panther G that was filmed on the 26th of December in the town of Otten. Several Panther tanks were lost here but only this one was filmed. In the shot you will see a Panzer IV and a Panther. The Panzer IV seems to be the lead tank that was knocked out and would have blocked the road. The Panther in the shot was forced to move around the Panzer IV and try to move through the muddy field. Because of its slow movement it was knocked out. Several pictures show these tanks next to one another. Eventually the Panzer IV was pushed off the road by the Americans and you can actually see it on fire in some of these shots. Both these vehicles were again set on fire for the newsreel alone. What's also interesting is that when the flames start to get more intense, it looks like something on the tank explodes. First I thought it was just the cameraman placing down its camera. But if you slow down the frames, it seems that there are sparks and to me it looks more like an explosion. When the camera is running again, the tank is engulfed in flames. In this reel we see a short frame of a Panzer IV Aus J that was blown up on the road at Wurzfeld, Belgium. There was also another Panzer IV on this road which was photographed in several pictures. Both these tanks were knocked out by an M10 tank destroyer. Their more complete Panzer would have had toward number 631 and Commander Osha Wien was killed when the turret was hit several times. You can see the damage on the turret in these pictures. Most of these pictures would have included Private William Boyd looking around or standing on top of the tank. But the other soldier in the pictures is unknown to me. In this reel we see American soldiers in the small town of Garamond close to Malmedy. They seem to be resting, talking and inspecting each other's white camouflage suits made from sheets and lace tablecloth taken from civilian homes. The most interesting part is the way these soldiers dressed up his M1 Garand.
The reel also shows the town covered in snow and dozers clearing the roads of snow. Of course, the cold and the snow formed a problem for the men. From not having any winter camouflage or enough winter clothing, the snow and ice itself formed a problem too. In this reel in the next you will see the British 13 Corps having trouble navigating the road and getting stuck in the fields. The Americans also seem to have the same trouble controlling their tanks, which slide uncontrollably down hills. For icy roads. After the first heavy snowfall of winter, these tanks of the 13th Corps were delayed three days trying to reach their destination over virtually impassable roads. When the snow-packed roads became icy, tank treads slipped and the vehicles slid into muddy ditches. Road movement proving too slow and hazardous, the tanks were driven cross country safely to their destination. Salvaging and taking advantage. Third Army had to contend with snow, sleet, mud, fog. Bitter winter weather was all on the side of the Germans. Tanks went out of control, skidded and slid. Sleet covered roads brought their own war casualties in tanks and trucks. The snow would also bring fun, like you can see in these two reels, where two Americans use the snow the best way they see fit and escape the war for some time. Ski yaring, a tonic for battle weary mind. In the town of La Roche, the British tank crews also seem to have some fun for the camera. The reel also shows the damage the town sustained during the fighting. You can see a damaged RSO and an abandoned Panzer IV. In this reel numbered 1897, recorded on the 5th of January, you will see the results of dealing with the snow and the aftermath of a terrible accident with the M36 tank destroyer. The soldier who saw the thing happen explains to another soldier how the M36 skidded on the icy road, tumbled over the bank and landed upside down in a ditch. The soldiers that were on top of the turret were crushed in the result. And it's recorded that one person died because of this. You see the tank getting salvaged by an M25 and then the M36 is getting cleaned up from what I presume is blood. And the body is covered with a jacket and then the belongings of the wounded and dead are collected. Here you can see they are using two recovery vehicles. One to be the main towing cable to pull it back onto its tracks and the other to be a counterweight so that it doesn't slam down onto the road 
and cause more damage to the vehicle. In this reel we see American engineers trying to figure out how to make a booby trap with a bazooka shell and the cardboard tubing the round came in. At Lorge, Belgium, the engineers improvised bazooka shells as roadblocks, employing the shell cases for firing tubes. After the ends are cut open, the cardboard containers are fastened on a fence facing the objective. The shell is returned to its case, which has now become the bazooka weapon employed by Company B, 238th Engineer Battalion. After wiring, the projectile is set off by a pair of flashlight batteries. In this two minute reel numbered 2312, filmed in the small town of Novel, Belgium on the 16th of January 1945, you can see Major General Maxwell D. Taylor of the 101st with Gerald Higgins and the deputy CEO discussing problems with members of his staff as they stand on the street in front of the HQ located in the local church. You can see several destroyed vehicles in this reel, like an MH Scott, a half track, and several German vehicles like a Stuk 3. Which is really hard to see, but can be clearly seen in these pictures. The actual battle for Novil started on December 18, 1944, when the 101st and the 10th armored units were sent to the town to defend the town of Maston. After heavy fighting, the 101st could not hold their lines and were ordered to move back to Baston. The town would eventually be liberated on the 15th of January by the 101st and 11th armored division. The town was heavily damaged, as you can see in these pictures. The Stuk 3 would be later overturned and pushed off the road. In this short reel we see a Tiger 2 tank and a Stammel half track in the town of Stavelot. Stavelot would prove to be a death trap for these big tanks and it would be the farthest point the German panzers would reach. This Tiger II with turret number 105 was commanded by Jürgen Wessel. During the fighting in these narrow streets the crew would back up in panic and the tank would drive into several buildings which would collapse onto the vehicle. This would get the vehicle stuck and the crew was forced to abandon it. In this reel filmed on the 13th of January we see an M5 steward from the 703rd tank destroyer battalion scouting around with several tank destroyers staying in the back like an M10 and an M36. Shots seem to be fired and M36 moves out. Note that the M36 has several white tablecloth made camouflage hanging off the hull and turret. The steward was often paired up with the M36 Jackson, where it would scout for hidden German tanks. Eventually the reel shows an actual onboard view, where you see them move past a abandoned Panther G, which was probably the tank the steward was scouting for. The steward and the M36 proved to actually be a deadly combo, the steward being nimble in scouting and avoiding the German tanks, and the M36 being able to knock out almost every German tank on the field. The reel eventually cuts again and we're on the road driving past the Panzer IV that has been pushed off the road. There is also one picture taken of this Panzer IV where we can see an M10 driving past it. Sadly I could not find any information on where these pictures were taken. The reel moves up to another onboard view and what seems to be the parts of destroyed German vehicles scattered all over the ground. Later you can also see a rare German wood cabin RSO in the background. A 
Another real shows another knocked out Panther Aus G, it seems to be again set on fire for the newsreel alone. I say this because it's already been pushed off the road some days before that. The vehicle seems to have its side ripped out by an impact. You can also see a captured wood cabin RSO driving past with an American star painted on it. In this reel we see one Panzer IV that suffered a severe explosion during an assault on Bastogne close to Chateau de Rolly on 24th of December. The picture of this vehicle is pretty well known and it's one where you can see the upper hull standing up vertically and the front lower hull destroyed and most of its gearbox and drive laying on the ground. Another shot you will see a completely destroyed Stuk, its gun and engine deck on the floor. Several other pictures show different Stuk tank destroyers all knocked out in the same field. Most of these pictures show a devastating landscape of burned out German tanks. Most of these tanks were actually knocked out by the 705th tank destroyer battalion, which used the M18 Hellcat. These vehicles managed to knock out 40 German tanks, with only 6 M18 Hellcats lost in the process. You can actually see one knocked out Hellcat in this image. But I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did leave a like and comment. If you want to support the channel consider buying me a coffee or support me on Patreon. I will see you in the next one.